Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to talk about how to breed Plecos 101. So I'm going to share some tips, uh, knowledge, and experience with breeding uh, Plecos. In my case, these are the Plecos that I've bred, which are the Peppermint Plecos, the Tiger Plecos, and the Starlight Plecos. So two of those are Bristlenose, and the other species is the Pinoculus, which is a little bit harder to tell males and females from. A lot of these tips and suggestions does apply across multiple species of Plecos, so maybe some of these tips can help you out. So let's start with just the bare minimum, making sure that you have males and females. A lot of times you'll buy the plecos very small, unsex, and you'll have to kind of grow them out a couple years before you can actually tell the sex. For bristlenose plecos, it's a lot easier to tell because the males will develop bristles on their nose where it's very distinct versus the females. For the other plecos, you have to kind of go off of the body shape, some of the hairs or spikes along their tails and fins, or even just possibly venting them. For the tiger plecos, the easiest way to determine the males to females are the spikes on the tails. The males will generally grow heavy spikes along their tails and along their face. The next topic is mature in size. So a lot of the smaller plecos that only grow about 5 to 6 inches, their maturity size is about 3 to 4 inches. Typically most plecos are sexually mature around 4 to 5 years. So let's assume that you have adult males and females in the tank ready to breed. So let's talk about some of the things that can help promote breeding. So for the diet, I highly suggest giving them a variety of things anywhere from flakes, pellets, wafers, and fresh veggies. You can also check out my other video here that I did on alternative foods for plecos uh, for any fresh veggie ideas. So you kind of just want to feed your plecos heavily so they can just kind of beef up you know, be able to produce a lot of eggs and just kind of spawn. So here are some tips that work for me. When your plecos are plumped large enough and you think that they're ready to spawn, you have to kind of promote them or push them to spawn. A lot of these plecos come from the Amazon. With the Amazon, there's a lot of rain and when rain falls, the water is pure, fresh, and cold. What I found that worked and helped promote spawning was to do a large water change and make sure the water is cold. For example, if your tank temperature is 76, you may want to drop that temperature all the way down to 70 and then have the heater slowly ramp the temperature back up. So what this does is it mimics rainy season. So like I mentioned, with rain, the water is pure and it comes down cold. On all of my successful spawns, I've noticed a batch of egg occur maybe a few days later after a large water change and the water temperature drops dramatically. Also, you wanna have high flow and high oxygenated water. You can use a wave maker, a wave pump, or a strong return pump. Just like in the wild, it mimics strong current flow. So here are some equipment I think that you definitely need if you're serious about breeding plecos. The first thing is the pleco cave. So with the pleco caves, it gives them a place to spawn in. Kind of like a dark confined area to kind of lay their eggs in and if you don't have an area for that it's really hard for them to breed. The pleco caves comes in different sizes, shapes, and form. To be honest my favorite pleco cave is the one that you can remove on the top. The reason for this is if you need to access the eggs you can just quickly take off the top, plop off the eggs, and put the top back on. The next item that you should look into getting is an egg tumbler. If it's the first time the plecos are spawning it's most likely the dad is going to be inexperienced and it'll kick out the eggs. Now once the eggs are kicked out, it's really hard to entice the dad to continue fanning and aerating the eggs. So when this happens, you'll need some sort of egg tumbler to aerate the eggs until they hatch. With an egg tumbler, I like to adjust the flow a little bit higher than normal when they haven't hatched yet. As they start to develop their tails and attach to the walls, I like to kind of decrease that flow so that it doesn't blow them around. The higher the flow, the less chance of fungus developing on the eggs. The last thing I suggest is getting a second tank as a grow out tank for your fry. By having another tank, you can quickly move the pleco cave into the secondary tank really fast. And when the fry is hatched, you don't have to worry about catching them because they're already in the tank that you want them to be in. All right guys, and those are some of the tips and experience that I've had when breeding plecos. I hope they helped you guys out. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. And like always, till next time, guys, peace.